What's going on, everybody? This is Jordan with Conquer Trading and Investing, and we're looking here at the markets. We're having a down day across the board. NASDAQ, Dow, S&P 500, all trading down a couple of percent. It's a little bit messy out there. We're going to talk about in this video whether or not this is a deeper pullback that is going to perhaps roll over, and we're going to be seeing the top of the bubble over here. When I say bubble, I'm talking about the NASDAQ. Look at tech going ahead, continuing to lead the way. But look at this pattern that it put on today. Is this perhaps the sign of some further movement to the downside? Or is it time to lean into the market, buy the dip, look to build position in? Well, I'm going to talk about how I'm positioned right now. I'm going to talk about how I think that it's smartest to be positioned. And as well as we're going to take a look at Bitcoin, we're going to take a look at the US dollar, we're going to take a look at gold, which is on the verge of continuing a breakout here to eight year highs. We're going to see how to position to gold or whether or not that should be silver we're looking at here to position in right now. We're going to take a look at all of this. We're going to skip the intro today because we're going to get right into what's going on. All right, so before we get in actually into the equity markets over here looking at the index, let's talk about what's going on with the US dollar today, which is trading as its highs. And really, after what looked like it was, let me come down to a four hour time frame with the US one, you'd be able to see what we were all watching. We were watching this possible head and shoulders over here, reverse head and shoulders. And after it triggered, right, it never followed through towards its potential target, back towards the real resistance at 98.30 on the dollar. Instead, it rolled over, right? You can see it rolled over from the resistance. Once it broke that trend line over there, that was the real sign, came into this first area of support, broke down the support, retested it, entry, right? And now since it's coming back off here after it reached the support down over here at 96. 40 what's its next move the dollar looks pretty firm right now why the dollar is firming and how much longer it could last that is the real questions we need to be asking ourselves nothing to do right now except watch if we come back down to the eight hour time frame we're watching as price comes back and towards the 9760 area of resistance still look for a rejection in that area once we get there and if we do get a re rejection do look up to go ahead and take back further positions against the us dollar now it'd be maybe mindful if we do break out above that last high over here and break above this resistance then we could see a deeper prolonged move and the question will be what happens as we come into this uh, this trend line resistance over here and the big 9830 line that will be the real test for the US dollar right now though for sure you're looking at the dollar firming up over here uh, that has bringing right now down the US indices it's also bringing down Bitcoin and it's also bringing down gold we'll look at gold in a second here's Bitcoin and you can see that it is still consolidating still above the 9100 support this is looking super bullish, continues. Remember, any pullbacks into the 8,500 support, perhaps as low still as 82, that's now above the trend line. You might get a spike. It's possible you get filled on a spike there. Why not have the order in there? I don't think, I don't think that we come back down, trade below that. I do think that we are getting close here to, to really break out of this consolidation pattern break out to the upside and really start this bull market. We are in for some exciting times, especially when you remember, or if you look at, can you imagine the Fed's balance sheet being expanded to $10 trillion? And what comes after that? You have to be asking the question, if they're going to $10 trillion, is that where they are stopping gold today? And we're gonna take a look at silver in just a moment as well. But gold over here, I wanna zoom in. I want you to see how gold is broken out above this resistance over here. It's broken out above the resistance and now pulled back, testing that breakout, pulling back perfect here. And as long as it holds now, and, and if it starts to make higher highs, that's an opportunity to get long gold. Gold should lead the way here towards 1800. And then after that, you should see silver and other metals catching up. Now, 
you are at a very nice place here as well in silver pulled back into this support silver resuming off even if gold leads for the few days ahead it might be the time making the switch now over to silver over to silver that in retrospect should have been done i looked at this in the video with you all when i looked at the correlation between sil gold and silver and i'm going to show it really quick to you because it's it's really important and I want you to see over here as we look at what happened during the crisis. At that point, gold just outperforms silver by a large margin. That happened back in 2008. I want you to see it. Here's the 2008 crisis. You could see also at this point, gold really, really outperformed. But after that, after I noticed the consolidation pattern that developed, right? Is that where we're headed right now? Are we headed towards some type of consolidation pattern? Maybe I'm looking for silver, like, oh, excuse me, I just said I was looking for gold to be leading the way towards 1800. That means silver should be lagging in these next few days. But I think, I think what we're gonna see is silver outperforming gold. I think right now, if you're looking to build positions, uh, silver might be the, the, uh, the instrument to do it on. I think that it, we're gonna see for an extended period of time now, an extended period of time, we're going to see the gold to silver ratio improve towards the sides of silver. I just want to go back to the last time QE was released, and that's back over here. That's back over here. Back in December of 2008, right here, QE started, and from that on, you saw the big move down in silver. Then you saw a large consolidation phase. All of this is a consolidation phase until it ultimately broke down really far. And I imagine we're gonna see more of the same of that happening right now. It seems that we've already entered this phase, right? Right now we're pulling back up. We're seeing a pullback on gold. Let me show you in real time. Here's the pullback happening, right? I imagine, I imagine that we are probably towards something like this before we do see also an extension down once again. So I think it's time to be building positions in silver. I expect gold leading the way right here, doing the hard work as you often see Bitcoin doing versus the altcoins. That's look where I'm definitely looking. What about what's going on here on the S&P 500? As we come back down now, as we come back down now into this support, this is support at 3030 that so far we've wicked into today. I, I don't expect it straight up. As soon as you start making a higher high on the eight hour time frame, you still have that bullish bias. You're just getting a taste of what's to come today. You're just getting a taste of what's to come in the future, but this is not really anything right now. Um, what we're seeing is something that is slow and contained. Uh, it is moderated. Uh, so what you're doing is what, if you see the eight hour make a higher high, that at that point you wanna exit any short you're in, you wanna perhaps be getting long. As you come into this area of support again, and between this, tre this trend line support coming in at 29.93, I'm sorry, coming at 29.91, you got the support up there at 30.30. Sorry, I don't call it the levels more often than I should. I will get in the habit of doing that more often. The trend line below it is coming in at, at uh, at 29.91 and then below that you have support pretty strong support all the way down to 29.44 this area over here is all support trend line support you're at support right now this could be an accumulation phase over here any any s p's in that area look to go ahead and build your position uh right now though i'm short on the nasdaq i'm short on the nasdaq um and you can see over here this momentum that we've been looking at ever since we had this break right around 10, 151. Uh, I'm looking for another leg down. Uh, and if we reverse back up, well then I'll be going with the momentum and looking to the long side. When you see headlines like the Dow is down 750 points on a resurgence of coronavirus cases and rising trade tensions, you have to take that with a grain of salt. And the reason I say that is that's just a narrative to simply a down day. Now, because why do I say that? Because we've been climbing up here on the markets. The markets have been climbing NASDAQ to new all-time highs with those rising trade tensions and those same rise in coronavirus cases. We've been talking on this channel for a while now about the possibility of solvency becoming an issue. And we're waiting 
and we're waiting for when that does show its head and if it does when how we could then position ourselves but right now what we're looking at over here is you're seeing the commercial bank loan delinquency rate correlated with the unemployment rate back in the past these two are very highly correlated the red number is the amount of loan delinquencies right loans that are past due and then the blue number is the unemployment rate and you can see the symmetry between the two and then you could see right over here, we have the spike in unemployment rate, right? And we're seeing a few jobs come back. We're still at some pretty high levels. So too should follow the bankruptcies. Looking over here at weekly filings are accelerating to the highest point since back in May of 2009. Is it gonna become an issue or are we gonna look at whether or not it's possible it's possible that the Fed's liquidity is going to be able to keep these markets buoyed. That's what we're really trying to discern over here. Healthcare is leading the, the record reason for declaring bankruptcy. Number two, however, was the energy sector. The energy sector saw the highest with the price of crude going negative, the highest, the second highest rate of bankruptcies. Now, what you're looking over here is the blowing over, is perhaps this blowing over. This is the number of distressed issuers, right, since March 10th during the crisis. And you can see the liquidity that has been injected into the markets has pushed the number of distressed issuers to the lowest point all the way since the beginning of March, right? So this begs my next question as Morgan Stanley is talking about the Federal Reserve. The source here is the Federal Reserve and Morgan Stanley's research. They're saying they're expecting by the end of 2021. No, I'm sorry. They're saying by the end of 2020, by the end of this year, the Fed's balance sheet will be at $10 trillion. And that's about another uh, almost $4 trillion extension of the Fed's balance sheet. Those are some big numbers. Those are so, could you imagine what the price, well, you, could you imagine what this will do to asset prices, specifically to gold, specifically to Bitcoin, and also the equity markets? What seems to be clear is that if we do have any downside pressure, and right now it looks like we're entering what looks to be like a consolidation phase, and it's going to be a volatile one, I think that we're going to see some volatile uh, range bound action over the next couple of months. And which way it breaks or when, when it breaks to the upside or downside, we'll see. But if it does break to the downside, we, you, could be, you could rest assured that the Federal Reserve is going to come in there as well as we're going to see stimulus passed through the governments. We're going to see other central banks across the world getting involved and we're going to see liquidity coming into the markets. That's for sure. Is it possible we take out the March lows? Listen, everyone, I hope you have a beautiful day. I'll talk to you tomorrow morning. We're going to go live at 9 o'clock a.m., review the markets together, see what opportunities out there, and break it all down. Have a great night, everyone. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later.